<laughs> okay, Daniel, do you want to take over? I can try. <laughs> so, uh, it's the first time I do it, so <laughs> I, I'm really sorry for any kind of like funky stuff that you you see, or if I have, if you are, I suddenly I have to show something in Chrome and I have 20,000 tabs open. Um, yes. <laughs> But let's try to do it the, the easiest for everybody. Uh, I don't know how to share. It's a live event. <laughs> yeah, we are prepared for, for everything. <laughs> for sharing the screen. Ah, okay. Do I have to select ah, the screen itself? I guess it will be the second. And I have to move this one out somewhere. Okay. Uh, everybody seen the presentation? No. Ooh. No, we don't see it. Okay. Unless you are the presentation. No? Yes, we see it oh, now. it's booting up, yeah. Okay. So, uh, I don't know how to put this. Ah, okay. But why can't I see the way it was showing? This is very wave. Why I cannot stop now? Ah, because it's okay. Now I see everything. So, <laughs> um, well, um, hi, I'm Daniel. Um, I don't know if you. I'm gonna start. I'm not gonna talk about myself because I don't want to bore you. And what is the? We want to all to finish and to continue with our lives. So, um, my point here is to talk a little bit about reactive programming with UniRx. I don't know if you guys have used it or anybody has used it uh, so far. Um, it's not something new, uh, but it's very interesting. It's also interesting if we are starting to see little by little the direction that also Unity is taking uh, with the ECS. Um, where we are going with programming is is a good to it's good to start thinking on on other ways of programming. And I wanted to bring it on as a kind of like a more like not very in depth talk, more like a you know chat, like taking a beer or something, but just to explain you a little bit what uh, what it is reactive programming and and how it can help us uh, in several use cases. Um, okay, continue a little bit. So, uh, I think that everybody is maybe familiar with this uh, beautiful image. Uh, for me, it's like, um, I, I cannot, I always laugh when I see it because it's like, you see the guy so happy <laughs> putting more and more single toes there. It's, I can't even imagine my wife always, she tells me that uh, when I put in too much oil in the salad, but it's just because in Spain we have very good oil and I have to put oil. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, when when we are working at, like uh, with Unity, it is a very good engine and it's very well designed and we tend to, um, it's very easy just to start coding and just um, you start to do your components, your construct your objects, uh, based on then and what you're doing, everything kind of like fall, fall in place. And I'm putting my component, I'm putting my data here. And it's it's kind of like a very easy when you're starting on. But this is, this is tight, it's kind of that doesn't last for long, especially when you start to add features. When you get your game designer saying, hey, just put this other thing here, or I want this thing to do something different that was not planned in the beginning. And then everything start to be very glued, like the UI uh, start to have dependencies everywhere. Um, other parts of the code start to be very stick together. And sometimes what you do or we all do is like we make some single tone here and there and we try to make just one canal for, for all this stuff, which is not, uh, of course, the best, uh, the best way uh, to do it. So, um, Actually, also, um, when we um, actually uh, doing, uh, especially games or mobile games, and you have a lot of uh, data which is asynchronous too, and you don't want to be blocked by any of this asynchronous uh, data that you are depending on. Um, you want your 
your game to be responsive all the time. Uh, you have to do a request online. You have to um, do something else based on that, that request. Um, yeah, so that's uh, actually that's why nowadays also we have a lot of uh, uh, well since a while since really a while it's very well spread uh, event driven architectures in general. It's very easy to do something asynchronous when you just base it on events. I have to subscribe to something. I have to listen with that thing has sent me something, and I can do something in response. And um, in Unity, for for instance, we have uh, um, used to have just regular callbacks uh, or very primitive async instruments like uh, coroutines. I mean, nowadays we have, for example, also async and await. It's a very good tool, but it's is not everybody knows how to use it neither. Um, so there are other alternatives that we have in, in that we can you, kind of like, they respond to these uh, situations as is uh, reactive programming. So maybe I can already, ooh, yes, we can already show something. I put some dice here so you can guess what is the demo about. It's gonna be very nerdy. Uh, I have, little project here and um, I mean I always played Dungeons and Dragons when I was a kid also so let's just throw some dice and see what happened. Um, it's a very simple example it's just to, to show more or less how how to do some reactive uh, or how I can we can do some reactive in Unity. We have here some simple D10 uh, uh, dice of 10 sides that we can click and we can roll it and we can get numbers. We can also roll a dice and keep the best roll and reset it. Or we can roll a dice and make some damage with a nice um, little delay animation until we die. And then we have to restart again because we save the, the, we save the game. So, um, Maybe here I can show very quickly little. I'm gonna jump in the code because I know how we all uh, like more this before anything else, before starting with the boring theory on why we should do this like that and what is the reason for and stuff like that. Uh, for example, for the first case where we were having uh, the little roll here, this is the first example, is the, the roll here on top. We basically, have some buttons, uh, that is the one that we click, then we have the dice, which is a game object itself, and we have a label inside of the dice, which is having the result. And here we are gonna do some code that after I'm gonna explain more in detail, but basically we subscribe, this is, the res this is a result, and we subscribe to this result and we apply in the text in the label. We also subscribe in a different way and we make some animation. And we are uh, having in the button, we uh, subscribe to the click event, and we are just gonna change the value of the result. And result here, as we're seeing, is a reactive property. So we are kind of like setting a value in the reactive property, and then here in the reactive property, we are subscribing to it. I'm not gonna get more in depth with that, but that's basically what it does. Um, let's go back to the presentation. If I can, can I, Daniel, please, or, okay. So, um, to understand, I mean, here, what we have basically is a very simple example of uh, reactive uh, programming. And we, we're gonna go a little bit uh, theoretical, but not too much, we don't need to worry because it's, it's gonna be very simple. And, and yeah, and, and I am a very funny guy anyway, I'm gonna make it very easy for you. So, <laughs> and usually, I mean, if we think in general when we write C sharp code um, or any games we mostly do with imperative language, so to say, um, writing scripts in Unity, for example, is no different. In the end, we use C sharp, which is an imperative language, so it's no exception in this case. And what is what are we talking here about imperative as con as counterpart of declarative language here is basically 
uh, in imperative language, we describe more how we want to do something, uh, while in declarative language, we describe what what wants, what is to be done. Uh, in our case, for example, we cannot change the fact that in C# for example, is an ex, uh, imperative language. And in the core of C# we can only write imperative. But uh, using certain frameworks, and in this case, like UniRx and reactive extensions, we can lift all the heavy um, inside code uh, for us, and we can just create certain declarative I use certain declarative paradigms and write some declarative code without needing to 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 do much in our site. In the end, which you will, we will see is a simple uh, function calls. No? Um, yeah. So, uh, what is in this in this case reactive programming? So there are super funky explanations if we start to check online, especially the first you put Google, uh, reactive programming in Google you're going to find uh, for sure the first uh, Wikipedia, which is going to be super abstract and super theoretical. Uh, you're going to find for sure Stack Overflow. Stack Overflow is going to be probably much a discussion, not very easy for starting to to understand the concept. And you're going to get more, more, more questions than answers. <laughs> and then if you check other resources like the Reactive Manifesto, there is a Reactive Manifesto. Uh, that explains more like what a reactive system should be. Uh, it's also, it's going to be, it's, it's very well thought, but it's not uh, throwing some uh, light for us. Uh, we, we want to call, we want to understand the concept. And we go to, if we go to other sources like Microsoft, for example, Microsoft has his corporate te terminology, it's going to throw observables, link you and schedulers and it's, it's also very confused. So, but it's something that we see through all the, the, all the explanations and definitions which are uh, uh, the, con the concept of reactive and the concept of the propagation of change. Uh, so, um, this, and these are things that are not new. If you check any framework that is model, uh, model view, whatever framework, you're always gonna see that your views react to the models and the change is propagated because otherwise you wouldn't render anything on the view. So what is the point? The point is uh, reactive programming is in, in general, it's a paradigm that it focus on how programs react to change. And if you want this be fit more in a sentence, it's this what we have here, reactive programming is programming with asynchronous data streams. In a way, of course, this is not new. Any typical click event is really asynchronous. It's an asynchronous stream of events. Uh, when we are uh, subscribing, adding a listener to a on click on a button in Unity, we are subscribing to the different um, events that this button is going to send to us. Um, but the reactive, the reactive extensions uh, has this reactive idea of uh, propagation of chains in steroids. So this is, in a way for us is to think in, you're able to create data streams of everything. And everything is everything. Uh, the streams are very cheap and you can have variables, user inputs, properties, caches, data structures, whatever. Um, if we imagine uh, you have uh, your Twitter feed, uh, you, you have the Twitter feed as a data stream and you subscribe to the changes and you can listen to the stream and react to that accordingly to display it in your game UI because you are uh, linking to, um, in, your, in your game for example, you are linking the, the news that you send in via your Twitter account that you want to display it in the, in the game like it does for example, I don't know if you guys know CTS Skylines. It has a little Twitter uh, tweet uh, icon, and it has some tweeting there. I don't know if actually it's linked to Twitter, but I know some guys that use that also as a kind of like way to connect the the community. Um, so it's 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 an example. Um, on top of that, the the we have when we have the reactive extensions, we really have an amazing toolbox of functions to combine and create and filter those data streams. Uh, 
and that is here is where it's starting to kick the, this functional magic. So a data stream in for us can be used as an input to another. It can even multiple stream can be used as input to another. You can merge streams of data. You can filter them depending on whatever uh, criteria you use. And you can even map these data values to another stream um, uh, into a new one, whatever. Um, reactive is all about the streams. And when we're talking about, um, or yeah, how to say it. Uh, these data streams that in the end is a sync sequence of, of ongoing events ordered in time, uh, they can be, uh, they are kind of like normalized to be emitting three different things. They can emit a value of whatever type that we define. They can emit error or they can emit a complete signal. Um, this, this, for example, what we usually see in the, uh, when we start checking and in reactive or observable in you are going to be checking in internet for documentation you're always going to see this kind of graphs this is how you define uh, how the flow of data how the sequence of data works uh, these are the different events this is the incomplete signal um yeah so uh, these events that we are gonna be sending in our stream you you are capturing them asynchronously um, by defining as uh, a function that will execute when a value is emit, another function when the error is emit, and another function when is the complete is emit. Uh, sometimes even the on complete or on error you don't have to define. Uh, this is my wife, by the way. Say hi. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, by listening to this stream. Uh, we call subscribe. Subscribe is the function that we use to to subscribe. Sorry for the that you cannot use the same word for define something. <laughs> and subscribe is what, what the function we use when we are listening to the changes in one object that we are observing. Uh, um, exactly, I was having here in my notes. Uh, the functions that we define. Of are the observers and the stream is the subject or the observable that is being observed. This is precisely actually the observable design pattern, the observer pattern, sorry. Um, let's go again to the, the demo. So here, where I was having the demo, here, and where I was having the code, here. So here we have in our example, this reactive property, this is going to be our observer. We are subscribing with the subscribe method to the changes that result is going to have. And the result we see is emitting here, when we set the value, is going to emit a change. We are rolling the dice when we click the button, and we are setting the dice value in the result observe. And we are going to observe it in this subscribe. This is here, we are using lambda expressions, but we could just put here a function. We could put here, uh, this way I can put it in outside in a separate function. We can see here, what is subscribe? Subscribe is gonna accept for sure one uh, int, an action int on next. So if we put here void, I think is here, uh, we are super happy. And this is not working because I put this um, to it. Now, if I put value here. So it's the same. Um, we pass. Uh, this is going to send us a send us a, an action of the type that we define here as generic. This is a name. So it's going to send us an action with a int parameter. Uh, if we put here my class, uh, we define here. I don't know. Massive abstract. Uh, 
or we put here a mask, then we will receive here a mask. And it will not work, but it doesn't matter. Ah, well, we can put it, of course, as a string. But we cannot set here a value to the dice. But will you guys get the point? <laughs> so let's go to another sample. Sample two. Here, for remind you, we were doing more stuff. We were having our uh, dice roll, and we were also having the the best uh, roll dice. Um, the code we have in this case two uh, properties. Um, when we roll and uh, when we when we click in the button, we set the the property of the result like in the first one and for the second one just if it's better we set the second that's it there is no no more um, science here and then we have uh one subscription for the for the dice uh, result and subscription for the best result and uh, we apply the same we in this case we are enabling and disabling the object when the the dice has a value better than zero and um, and um, we put in the value in, in the label and we make a small animation. Um, another thing that here is not set, for example, when we, when we set a value by default in a reactive property, this zero will get emit by default. So if we set here a value of 10 on creation, then when we start here and we start to subscribe, we are gonna receive the first value. Uh, but we can start to making the, the reactive magic. We can start here. We have all the uh, link queue uh, methods available because the .NET, the guys that were doing in .NET, the .NET re, uh, reactive extensions, they were the same thing that were doing link queue. They were doing it at the same time. So actually, if you start seeing documentation, I will mention it after, if you start seeing documentation from reactive extensions from other languages like JavaScript or or whatever, you will see that the functions, some of the functions and the names are not the same <laughs> because in .NET we have the link queue names for some functions like uh, throttle, for example, in in .NET is uh, I think it was uh, delay buffer, what it was, it was another one in JavaScript, but in general, we can use all the, the link you uh, since it's a kind of sequence, it's, in, it's a sequence of data. Uh, here, for example, we can say I want to skip the first five values. So this result will not be here also. And this in our demo. When I click in, the first time I click on roll, it will not do nothing after I click on five times. Tuck, 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 tuck. And now it works. Because it's keeping the first five values. Um, another way, actually, I'm going to show you because I have some, um, but I'm going to show you. Have my multiple tabs open. Uh, I think I have, uh, oh, no, I have the, Bar from <laughs> I cannot click. I, yes. So um, the actually, if we go to reactivex.io, this is the place where this is one of the websites where you can find a lot of documentation about reactive extensions. You can check check uh, what does every of these commands that we can apply into uh, one data stream. Like here, for example, it was buffer, but we can change what it does. Here is the delay, for example, we have a skip, skip until, we have a lot of that. Uh, reduce, average, counter, take until, it will take it until you, whatever you define in your function. And you will, you can see here clearly, here is the skip. It does a skip two, it skip the first two, and then I start to receive the object after uh, I have skipped the first one. In the end, as we were mentioning before, we are just always, working with data streams through the time. Um, yeah. Okay, maybe I can go further with the, 
yes, with the PowerPoint. So, um, uh, why it's interesting for us, uh, reactive extensions? Um, or I think for, at least for us in our company, it was very interesting in reactive extensions. Well, in case of Unity, um, network operate, especially network operations and UI, uh, that for networks you always require a uh, W class or Unity uh, requests, uh, web requests nowadays, because W is uh, deprecated, or call routines um, to, and using the call routines for asynchronous is not a good practice. So uh, in one case you, you cannot return a value, and in other case you cannot have handle exceptions, for example, or stuff like that. So this makes, uh, it's a little bit harder, it makes it very hard to compose uh, when you want to make uh, one thing depending on another. I want to get my data from the web and then I want to check uh, whatever I have received and then I have get this data or this other data, I want to apply this to something else. No? This is very easy uh, with reactive extensions as we can compose those data streams of time. We don't care when it's arrived, we just care whenever the data uh, has been, is being emit, I'm gonna subscribe to that change and I'm gonna do something on that. Maybe I just want to map this string or this int that I have received into a string, this object into another object because it's gonna come to my player, it's gonna be, become something else, no? Um, yeah, this uh, reactive extension in, that, in, this, uh, in this sense is, making, curing this whole asynchronous blues that we have in, in, in Unity. Um, and is using these observable collections and link you style sort of query operations, so it makes it very easy. Um, even the game loop uh, update on collisions, the sensor data from, from BR, from other inputs, all, they are all types of, of events in the end, and the yeah, reactive intention in that they represent those events are reactive sequence um, are easy to compose, support time-based operations. Um, yeah, we can easily um, manipulate them with link queue sort of queries. Um, yeah, I know, I can continue. In this case, for example, we have uh, actually in reactive extensions, we don't have just the basic set of uh, the .NET reactive extensions. We also have some Unity extra flavor uh, extensions. Uh, we can get uh, updates related function uh, events or uh, event based on input. In this case, for example, we have a, we are making a double click uh, detection. As we see, as we were mentioning in the beginning, this is very declarative. We, are, we can say this in the start and we say I want uh, to react for this double click and do whatever I want in in my UI or in my button or in my object that I want a double click. You define it in the beginning. Um, it's very simple. Here we have a buffer for example which is gonna it's an operator that this transform the observable that is emitting items into an assembly that emits collections of items. Uh, maybe I can show you in the documentation we're having buffer. I think I just, we're having buffer. So we are buffering, we, you define in the buffer how many, how much you want to buffer it, or depending on which condition, and it's gonna group the amends that has been emit into a collection. Um, where do I continue here? Oh. And then we have the throttle, which is another uh, operator in, in the rest of reactive language, for example, is called the bounds. In JavaScript, it will call in the bounds. And if you check other general documentation, it will not, you will not find throttle. And this operator, for example, filter out the items that have been emitted from the source. Uh, and they are rapidly followed by another emitted, uh, emit item. So here, basically, you're saying, hey, I want uh, to, uh, based on this time, I want that for the rest of the quarter of second that you are receiving something, just skip it, I don't care. 
and that's it after that when we get a counting of two that they have been enough time uh, with enough time separation then i subscribe and i'm gonna throw in the log double click detected you are awesome you are doing some action um for network operations for example also super simple function we just send an observable to get uh to send a get a http I make an HTTP request to get this up, uh, this from this website. You get the result, which is the website HTML, and you can this uh, subscribe is kind of like it's returning you on success. It returns you an object X, which will be in a string, the website, uh, or an exception will be thrown when it's uh, having an error. And this, for example, imagine you have a case where you are just uh, connected to a website to download some some settings uh, or some information. You can parse that information and do whatever you want in your code. Um, or you can do also parallel requests also when you use when all. Basically, it's going to wait until all the observables have been finished or they send an on complete or they send an on ever. As we were mentioning before, these are the kind of finishing events that we get from from a from a um, observable and then it's gonna you can subscribe to that and when they all finish then it's gonna it's gonna emit and here is emitting basically an a collection that's why we have the here xs012 for each of the observers that we have observables that we have uh, requested in this case the same like we were having in the previous one with just one, we'll get the Google um, estimate code, the uh, Bing estimate code, and Unity website estimate code. Um, yes, I mean, in general, um, it's, it's, it's very interesting in, to use uh, reactive extensions when we're having uh, UI or network code. This, there are these special cases that we have really uh, asynchronous uh, data and it can help a lot to shape the the code that we have there uh, and making it easy to understand and avoid this gluing that we have sometimes when we have a lot of uh, reference depending in between each other uh, is not any way just the, the kind of like the uh, the solution in the end because you can combine reactive code better when you use reactive architectures and you can shape really the architecture of your app or of your game to to be more uh, reactive or the change to be more predictable the states you can hold the states in one place or you can have it in the systems as we we could think in um, in ecs and the system and the data that we have there uh, if the systems are basically modifying, uh, applying changes on the on the data. And in our case, if we think on a reactive state as a place where we have uh, services, services contains his state, you can consult the state of those services because you are checking those reactive properties that the state have. Um, you can build an architecture in a kind of like very uh, decoupled way. Uh, um, yeah. For us, is really is being uh, really um, mind blowing the way that uh, we were having tightly uh, couple um, uh, code base. Um, a lot of times, very one it was very different to another because in the end, if uh, everybody uses his own ways to code and we don't agree in a kind of like a, a consistent or common architecture to use, it's also harder to. To, to follow up and everybody can do things in a different way. Uh, and if in the case of reactive uh, architecture, it's very clearly uh, visible when you are defining via declarative code, what are the intentions of your code to do? Uh, so it's very easy to read too. Um, maybe it would be actually cool to make uh, in the future one, one talk about um, these reactive ar architectures because there are uh, several like Redux, for example, we are using nowadays. It's really, really cool. 
uh, the way the way you can actually yeah define those uh, those services uh, make a predictable state so your app is very easy um, it's very easy to extend it because you just define the actions that you want the, your application to do or your game to do you send them and uh, they will be consumed by the by the services that they allow these actions to be consumed and they can just change this state and you just subscribe to that state but it's important to know what uh, reactive programming is and how this uh, state changes get propagated so you can uh, adapt your 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 code and start thinking on react because it's really hard when you start and you start see okay that this is not really imperative i'm checking every update the changes or i'm just gonna do i could add some reference here and i'm just gonna do it every time it's other way of programming but it's really interesting um yeah uh, i have more stuff no that's it <laughs> uh, that's all guys um I don't know. It's very abstract. It's, it was very fast. Um, uh, yeah, if you have questions or um, anything, just throw it. Uh, I have one. Um, yes. Can you show the example where you skip the first five and, and show that you can? I mean, it looks like that you use the skip operator on both, but that's not necessary. So can you uh -huh. just skip on the first one and the second not? So we okay. Out so that the stream is still there. A little music. <laughs> and you know why this happened? <laughs> yes. Be because the because when we are sending the here the button yeah we are emitting the value uh, we are sending the value to the to the observable query for the we are emitting here but this is being ignored here but we are also checking and emitting it here, because of here the best value, being ignored. Yeah. exactly so if we would be doing something if we, would we be see animation we see the animation on the on the first queue but without updating the text what we should see the animation of the first queue, but without updating the text on, in the first queue. No, because everything, the animation and everything in this second case, ah, second case. Ah, is ah, all okay. together. In the first one, we were putting because we can do, we ah, can do, se we can subscribe in separate ways. We can put it yeah, all together. Yes. Um, yeah. I thought it was it was separated. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, my fault. <laughs> no problem. We all learned something. <laughs> um, Yes. Yeah, I was, uh, sorry. sorry. Uh, I just wanted to say thanks a lot for the interesting talk, and I wanted to encourage the audience uh, to ask more questions. So let let me ask the other way around. Who for whom was this the first UniRx experience? Just raise your hand, make a thumb thumbs up. Okay, thank you. Um, my second question is then, um, for whom is like, shall we continue with such technical talks or is it, do you think it's not appropriate for our uh, meetup? So thumbs up if we should continue with uh, high tech talks like this. <laughs> Nobody likes it. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's not you. It's okay. It's okay. Come on, you see. I know. I know. It's very cold, cold issue. So we always have like a split between very technical and and very let's say easy to digest because for, for sure seeing a visual note system is pleasing for the eye, but it's still a lot of things you have also to keep in mind when you program it and set up the notes. So yeah, and just seeing code is always a little bit frightening, I would say, but. I said it was worth more than 50%. That, that's good to know. Thank you. And, and one advice uh, that you hear all over if you begin with Reactive is like, don't throw away all your code and, and start only going declarative. Uh, just 
keep as much as possible imperative and go slowly step by step to the declarative ones. Yeah, of course. Uh, because it's, it's super confusing and you learn only by experimenting and by, by programming with it. It, it doesn't make sense uh, that we, this is not like uh, when we discover something, I stop everything that we were doing before, let's throw it and re reinvent everything from zero. That, that's, uh, that's not the point. <laughs> we, that's why I was mentioning that is, uh, for me, for example, I see it very, very clearly uh, that is the use case for UI and for network dependent code is very interesting. Uh, if you make the whole system um, based on that, you can do that. There is people that do the whole systems also using uh, dependent Gentium frameworks, for example, or other kind of frameworks. And in the end, if it helps you to, to build your, your applications or your games, then I guess everything is welcome. No? Uh, but uh, yeah, it's always uh, depend on the team that is working on and what is easier for you all to to be to be working together and getting somewhere. Yeah, I can share. We we are, uh, are using it and uh, as well, and especially we we like it a lot, especially for REST uh, calling REST API. REST APIs or fetching images over a network, um, yeah, and but um, it's great for every asynchronous tasks. Also, actually, uh, the guy that was doing this uh, um, reactive extensions for Unity, he's working because it hasn't updated. Actually, I think in last April was the last. Uh, update that he did. Um, I guess neither there is not much to do once you actually have math, uh, in the end all the extensions. I know there are a few uh, methods that could be changed. I think the still, for example, is using the old observable www, which is going to throw on uh, the application there like a, it's in the of warnings. <laughs> exactly. So, but uh, you can always fork, fork the, the project and then just change that stuff. And he's right now based um, more on the another library he's doing is called unitask that one was before inside of unirx but now they he have detached it and um, is doing asynchronous and await um, kind of integration with unity uh i mean because it's already in c sharp but other kind of uh, tools uh um yeah it's very cool i haven't did too much on it but it would be interesting also to make a, a call and it's also compatible with with only uni rx right exactly yeah 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 cool yeah thanks for a great talk mm -hmm. um anytime